Alright guys, so this is just the uh, video series for V-Ray rendering in Rhino. Uh, ultimately, it's a very complex system that V-Ray has created. Uh, it's, it's really well done, uh, but there's lots of options to understand. Uh, this first video is just going to be the initial kind of walkthrough, uh, basic overview, and uh, each subsequent video will go into specific details on different options available. Uh, so the first thing that we just want to do is uh, very simple. We're going to create a box. Uh, you can do that in a number of ways in Rhino. But box is just going to be around the origin here. Uh, we're getting perspective mode. The perspective serves as the camera view. There's other ways you can do this. We can render in, in top or front right here or any number of, uh, of ways. But typically we always use uh, perspective as a, as a camera for a rendering. Uh, now that we have a box, so we're going to want to render it. So if you go up to render, uh, you can set your current render to either Rhino render or V-Ray for Rhino. Uh, clearly we're using V-Ray for Rhino. Here we have the V-Ray toolbar. Uh, just like all the other tools in Rhino, there are actual typed out commands for these. Uh, and typically I type commands, but for V-Ray I always have used the toolbar. Uh, so to go over them real quick, we have materials, uh, options for the camera. This is the Buff, or frame buffer, which is the, the image that has been rendered, the render, uh, sunlight systems, an infinite plane, which we're going to use quickly, and then just about. Uh, so now that we have this, uh, let's go ahead and just do a render and see what it looks like. So mine rendered off screen, drag it back over here, and uh, it's simple white box, nothing much to it. I'm going to go ahead and close this. This was all just kind of the rendering process that shows you that dialog. We're going to add an infinite plane. Uh, as you can see now, it kind of just goes on forever to the horizon, which is good because then we're able to cast shadows on things. You can do another render, and you can see it's starting to show some shadows, but really it's really washed out. Um, so let's take a look at a couple other options here. Uh, to, to, to produce more accurate renderings, uh, currently we're just using uh, ambient skylight. Uh, and that's nice, and that's, that's something that exists in the real world. Uh, but we can also add lights, uh, and under Rhino's tools here we have all types of lights, uh, one of which is, let's say, a spotlight here. And it asks you for the base of the cone, so I can draw that here, uh, and then a, a direction of that uh, end of the cone. So there's a, there's a cone light. Uh, it's kind of odd, and one of the nice tools they have is edit light by looking. So now I'm actually looking as if I'm a light. Uh, so I can actually move around the object and say, okay, as a light, I'm going to be shining down here. So if I click back in, in, in the perspective mode here, uh, I can see my light is shining in that corner, and if I render, I uh, should see uh, it's brighter here. Right now, it's, it's so bright that really that doesn't even matter. So let's go ahead and just delete that spotlight. Uh, and the thing that I use most, and I think you'll probably use most often, is the V-Ray sun system. So in the next video we'll go through and look at what the sun system entails.